Uh, oh yeah, right, Kerry's just dropped by with uh, injectors that have been um, well refurbished. So another stage. We're going to do the compression test of the engine. But first things first, we're going to uh, um, suck out the diesel tank and uh, empty that out uh, in preparation for putting inspection hatches in the top, which uh, which will be a laugh. Great. So uh, yeah, things progressing on all fronts. All right, hello. We're back on the boat today, and uh, today's job is sorting this thing out. And this large lump of metal here is the uh, fuel tank and so uh, as you can see it's pretty damn big uh, yeah uh, heaven knows how many liters of uh, fuel is going to come out and we'll go in there probably about a thousand twelve hundred something anyway net result is um, it's been oh, thumb. it's been uh, we don't know how old it is don't know how long the fuel's been in there um, and there's no way of looking inside so what we're going to do is um, cut out a hole and install an inspection hatch or inspection hatches uh, because there might be a baffle in the middle to stop the the, the fuel sloughing about so uh, we might have to put one in there and one in there anyway so that's the job for the day um, Teddy's going to come over and help me with that and uh, yeah so we'll show you how we get on with that this is one of the kind of last sort of uh, major major jobs really um, sort the fuel system out and, and then hopefully with a bit of an engine service uh, everything should be cushy so yeah there you go right at the end of the day this is where we're at um, so there's good news and there's bad news and the good news is uh, the job was definitely worth doing because if you look at all this shit at the bottom of the tank um, that would have been stirred up into some kind of primeval soup as soon as we hit the channel and uh, it, it may have stopped the engine so this is what happens why you've got to uh, be very very careful about having good uh, fuel tanks clean fuel tanks clean fuel when you uh, go out onto wavy seas so so that was the good news the good news is that uh, that was a job and that i'm really glad i've done it uh, because i think that would have got us into um, quite big trouble if we'd have gone out because uh, the only way out of it is uh, into the estuary so uh, we'd have stirred up all the, the crap at the bottom of the tanks and um, yeah it might have been calling the uh, calling the lifeboat out which is not good so uh, I'm, I'm happy uh, the downside is because um, there are two of these baffles in the tank and uh, the, the reason they're there is to stop the diesel sloshing about from left to right and causing uh, a problem with balance so um, you see there's a, just a little cut out corner that's the only way that the fuel can go between the three different cells um, so that's the downside there are three cells so it means we're going to have to have three inspection hatches and not just one or we, we were going to go for two probably but um, yeah so now we need three so middle and end, the same as this, um, because there's no point cleaning one side and not the other. So, so it's three times the work and three times the money, and um, but uh, it's a job that needed doing. So there you go. Okay, right. Well, this is uh, we were back down the boat, and I've been putting this job off for uh, a long time, and. Um, about now it's got to get done so uh, here we are Tony's finished he's put in uh, three inspection hatches one two three uh, I think we're going to need three I thought one uh, possibly two I thought there might be a baffle in the middle um, but there wasn't uh, there was two baffles so it's stopped the uh, diesel sloshing around 
so three portions of the tank so we had to have three three inspection hatches um, and so obviously three times the work but anyway we're all done basically yeah. we I think Tony had to move the first one over because it's right just unluckily is right on top of the first baffle so we need to sort something out with these uh, like four holes here but today's job is um, clearing all the shit out so I've got my rags I've got some black sacks uh, I've got some scrapers and bits and bobs and uh, put the blue gloves on and away we go I think yeah so I've been looking at um, sort of YouTube videos trying to work out what the best way to clean that diesel tanks out is and it does seem to be get in get your hands dirty and just blot it up really but anyway I was watching one guy in the Caribbean who had um, I don't know about three bogies worth of uh, algae in his entire uh, glistening stainless steel diesel tank and he was getting himself into a quite old bladder about that and all I can say is Mr Caribbean is have a look at this repulsive repugnant shit in here and then tell me you're unlucky but that is hideous and it's all got to go so okay so I'll do some more filming in a minute but uh, yeah there we go that's what we're up against and it's not going to be pleasant I'm going to get the vax on it and uh, yeah just uh, gurgle out all the, the remainder of the diesel that's in there and pull that away we've got some uh, uh, waste oil tank in the boat yard so so that's going to be okay right so that's that i'll uh, bring you back in, in a minute Okay, and I think I was right to put that off because this is some horrible, horrible crap in here. Anyway, so we're. Uh... Oops. There you go, that's the first cleaning. Just get most of the crap out. There's a bit more stuff in that corner. Scraped it all out. That's one tank. It's taken me a long time. I think I might have killed my vax, but there you go. And what came out of it? There's an awful lot of this. Anything like that, it's just going to clog your filters up straight away and you'll end up thin with water, which is not a good idea. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just totally amazed that when we went off to, uh, to Zamdam, fired this uh, old girl up, she just clonked into life absolutely no problem and cruised down the canal for half an hour. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm utterly amazed. But there you go. Note to self, change the filters. Okay, ding ding round two. And here is round two. Again, absolutely fabulous. Don't know what that is over there. It might, it might be a drain plug, but obviously we can't get to the drain hole. But anyway, there you go, lovely. Happy Easter. the third one cleaned out and have a little look at what came out of that lot oh my god how that engine functions I don't know lovely like I say it's big up to uh, Volvo bus and truck engines because uh, well they can chew any old shit literally uh, catch you later Ugh. 
Right, and that's the third one done. I've had enough. That is a scuzz job. Uh, it's probably uh, the worst job I've had to do on this whole boat, actually, I have to say. Anyway, um, before I go off and stuff my face with Easter eggs, um, yeah, just a word about uh, Tony's uh, job that he's done here, which is a pretty decent job, I think. Um, he's made basically uh, a frame out of um, angle iron and uh, welded bolts sticking up to take the uh, the top sheet uh, and just tapped it tapped it to the tank to stop it falling in which uh, obviously is, uh, yeah you don't want to be doing too much welding on a tank that's still got diesel in it and diesel fumes and stuff not as deep no diesel is quite hard to um, get to light up but even so you don't want to be uh, messing messing with your luck I think anyway so that's what he's done that's quite good happy with that um, so now that uh, now that the tanks are f uh, well surface clean first clean um, next step I think is to get in there with I don't know maybe some uh, maybe the petrol or something like that or some kind of spirit uh, and give it another good clean out um, and then I might take advice on um, the top of the tank which has been I guess largely empty has got surface rust on it so uh, take some advice on what to do about that whether to um, to paint some anti-rust paint over it or, or what or just to just to leave it alone I don't know when we after we go into the water um, I'll probably get a tanker to come down and we'll just fill the whole fill the tank up uh, and that should keep the rust at bay anyway and if we as far as possible keep the tank topped then um, that, that's a better way to go better way to go ahead anyway right really tired so uh, that's it happy Easter everybody and I'll catch you day two of tank cleaning and uh, I think I've reached my limit there's not that much more I'm, I can do I'll tell you what I've done um, so we gave it a good old clean out yesterday got got the 90% of the crap out and today uh, I've gone in there and uh, given it um, a rough sand where the surface rust um, tried getting in there with an angle grinder but it's just it's too it's too unpleasant you can't you can't last in there with all this stuff flying around and the the, the fumes and everything else so uh, i've just managed to give it a rough sand um and it is surface rust most of it comes off just by rubbing it with your gloves so that's that's okay um and of course that's uh, left a whole load more of detritus in the bottom of the tank so um then I got some petrol and um, just put some on a brush and literally gave it a, a, a brush round with petrol and a, and a good wipe out. Um, and I'm going to leave the, uh, all the tanks open for 24 hours so that the, the vapour has a chance to just evaporate. So we won't have any petrol residue in there. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what we're left with. That's a pretty clean tank. It's so much better than it was, but it's still not perfectly clean. But I don't think it's possible to get it perfectly clean. But uh, there you go. If we fill it, we'll fill it full of a thousand liters of diesel. That that I think will dilute any any uh, any of the particles. Well, uh, only time will tell. But I think when we uh, cruise off on our first run, we'll have you know. A goodly quantity of uh, of petrol filters or diesel filters rather uh, we'll have a goodly quantity of, of uh, fuel filters to um, just in case but um, I think now any any crud that is in there is very small particle type stuff and the filter should be able to handle that I'm hoping fingers crossed anyway um, yeah and the plan to um, keep the tank topped up think is a good one having done a bit more research last night so there you go that should uh, stop that rust right well, there we go that's 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 about as good as it's going to get here yeah you know, it's a really really horrible horrible job but uh, we got to the end now there's just a few other bits and bobs I need to do to the fuel system uh, and now looking forward to um, putting under the wheelhouse to bed really to be honest uh, there's a few just uh, I need to run the uh, calorifier to engine pipes and I need to put in the fuel tank um, sender for the um, 
you know, a fuel tank gauge, fuel, you know, full and empty gauge. Uh, what else? Uh, and run the fuel pipe for the boiler and install the pump. So that's a few things to do for the rest of this week. Hopefully get the windows back. If you're wondering why we're all in darkness, uh, it's because uh, most of the warehouse is boarded up. All the windows have gone to Merv. Um, and he, he should hopefully be getting them back to me this week. So we'll be able to have a majority double glazed windows in, in the wheelhouse. Um, yeah, onward, onward. <laughs> oh, when will it end? All right, see ya. Hello, back at the boat. Right, still on fuel. Uh, I forgot me. Um, I forgot the camera yesterday, so uh, didn't have a chance to um, show you closing this up. But we now decided that enough's enough, cleaning wise. <coughs> so uh, we put the tanks on. Yeah, I made this strip to um, cover up the uh, the misdrilled four holes, um, so they're not going to leak and. Um, <coughs> put all the uh, nuts on bolted these uh, these inspection covers down with a goodly proportion of um, Sikaflex uh, as the gasket so hopefully a bit of luck um, they are not going to leak so uh, the only way to find out is to fill the tank up good okay last things um, now um, managed to well what I'm going to do is um, actually just show you uh, on the fuel system what we got on the boat really what I wanted to do was to um, show you uh, what ba basically the fuel system um, so we'll start with this massive great tank obviously gets filled through the main filler and it goes up to onto the deck and comes out down here it's all a bit of a mess because of the foamers but um, so you've got a main, your main cutoff valve there. There's also another one that's in line. So I'm gonna have to cut a hatch for that in the floor so you can turn the fuel off to the, to the engine. So the fuel goes off to the engine, <coughs> basically through this bulkhead into the engine, which uh, the fuel pump is, is sucking out of the tank, sucking the diesel out of the tank and it sucks apparently much <coughs> more than the engine needs so um, what happens is we have a return pipe so the excess fuel is shoved out of the pump and goes back out of this second pump the second pipe here um, and into the top of this little day tank so the net result is when you run your engine um, obviously the fuel comes out of the big tank, runs the engine, and excess fuel is is siphoned off into the day tank. So as long as you run your engine, you'll always have a full day tank. Um, and that fills up until it, 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 it um, can't fill anymore. And then the overrun goes, that's the overrun when it's full, goes back into the top of the tank. So it circulates around. Now the result of that is you've got hopefully after um, running the engine for a bit you've got a full day tank which is then used for other purposes uh, and in our case we got the little diesel stove um, which is going to be on the hearth uh, and that will run from this tank here so this is you know on off tap out eight millimeter copper goes down to the diesel uh, diesel fire and we got interesting T here which is um, there's a 3 8 um, lead off here which will hopefully when I get the appropriate size copper pipe um, be the fuel um, pipe that feeds the diesel boiler which is in the uh, in the engine bay okay so that's the fuel system having gone to all this trouble of um, getting and doing that disgusting job of uh, sorting the tank out. Um, done some research this morning on on what to do about keeping it nice and clean. And um, so it, it turns out as uh, when we fill the tank up with uh, fresh diesel, we'll probably add a biocide um, in with the um, 
in with the diesel, which sits there and, and just basically kills bugs. Um, essentially, the um, diesel bug, as they call it. Um, unless you continually top your tanks up, keep them full all the time, um, th there's an air gap, and so you get condensation. Condensation means water, and water falls down the side of the tank because um, diesel floats on top of water, right? So, these, uh, so the water falls down the side of the tank and, and starts to collect at the bottom. So um, this bug uh, exists in the in the layer between the diesel and the water. It feeds from the diesel and obviously needs needs water to survive as well. And uh, so um, that's that's where the sludge starts to form. Um, so ways to, to, to stop it are um, keeping your tanks full, which is easier said than done if you're going on a long, long journey. And um, the use of a biocide when you fill your tank up. Um, and there's also um, things called fuel conditioners, which <coughs> um, help to kill the bug and also break down this matter and also um, make the water go um, soluble into the diesel as well. Some of them do that. Um, and the net result is that uh, you don't have any water, they can't, uh, the bug can't survive, and, and uh, the water goes actually into the engine uh, and gets chewed up with the diesel, so uh, it, it, can't, um, it doesn't stay in the tank. Uh, other ways of dealing with it are, uh, if you notice at the bottom of the tank we had that kind of sump and attached to that sump was a was a tap uh, and you're supposed to like monthly drain off a little bit of um, diesel water. Um, right, so that's uh, fascinating facts for you but um, yeah, last little, little bit here is um, this is a fuel gauge sender. Um, because we don't have a fuel gauge on the boat, so it'd be nice to know um, whether or not how full your tank is. Um, and this is going to go where the drain, original drain tap went. So it's, it's a right old mess of different fittings because that's a quarter BSP fitting, and we had to. Yeah, I couldn't get a tap that was uh, less less than half an inch. So. Anyway, that's why it's so long. Had these various little bits of fittings from screw fits, and and the um, the fuel sender sits on the end. It works on pressure, so you set it when the tank is full, and um, you should get an approximate readout of how full your tank is, which is then um, transmitted to the to the gauge, which will sit on um, the wheelhouse. There. So uh, yeah, the only thing I've got to do here is. Um, is fit this all together and make sure it doesn't leak and there's so many fittings that leaking is going to be a high possibility. Now I'm going to use the instant gasket. I've been advised to use that because that is um, fuel and oil um, proof whereas uh, worryingly all the other joints I've taken apart have just been rammed up with PTFE tape which apparently is rotted by diesel so over time you'll get leaks. Um, so I've decided to use this um, this gasket sealer. Um, if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments um, because this is quite important as there'll be a thousand litres of fuel sitting over the top of that. So, okay, so I'm going to um, just uh, put this together, fit it on the tank, and hopefully that's uh, going to be my drain valve and also my fuel sending device. I can just unscrew this sender and and use that to drain any water that's formed up but we're going to be using these other products as well so hopefully it won't be an issue all right just thought i'd bring you in on that um the complexities of fuel uh getting there though um so that should be about it done today hopefully okay that's that done um so there we are fitted um new drain valve and the fuel sender and that uh, well uh, one last thing about the fuel senders if you are thinking about um, fitting something like that um, the advice is that um, 
so I've got two outlets from the tank there. There's either the drain plug or the um, where the fuel comes out to go to the engine. If you put the sender on the fuel line into the engine, you'll only get a reading uh, of the fuel when the engine is stopped because it works on pressure and uh, when the engine is, is sucking diesel I think the pressure is reduced so um, you don't get a reading so that's why it's gone on there um, right apart from that that's uh, the vagaries of fuel covered I hope if I've got anything wrong please feel to free to comment and tell me um, because this is only sort of uh, um, the result of my research I um, um, hope this uh, doesn't seem excessively long for fuel but I think it's about 90% of boat kind of rescues and breakdowns etc uh, are because of bad fuel stopping your engine and you know we've only got one engine here there's nothing there's no backup if the engine goes down and you're on a big river then then you're heading for a world of pain and hurt so uh, so it's best to pay attention to to your fuel there you go all right, hope you've uh, enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Thanks to uh, all the new subscribers coming on board. This is all good good fun. And uh, yeah, see you on the next video. Okay, last few things done. Finally got my 3 16th copper. And uh, sorted that out. So it's... Uh, Compression fitted onto the two piece here. Uh, mounted the pump down there, the pump down there. And uh, you have to make sure that the pump is lower than the tank and that it's an uphill gradient from the pump. So uh, I think we just about achieved that. And uh, just pops in there and goes through another meter um, to the uh, diesel boiler. So that's it. That's it fuel done.